Hi, my name is Dayo Adeneye and I'm a 22 year old Nigerian from South London. In the summer of 2012, I went back to Nigeria for the first time in 18 years. Even though I had a good time, it made me realise that I'm not really in touch with my culture. I mean, I can't really speak Yoruba, my parents' language. This has inspired me to find out more about Nigerian life in London and why a lot of young Nigerians today are not in touch with their culture. According to a recent census, Peckham in South London is home to the highest Nigerian community in the UK. I went there to meet Rachel Shonde, who grew up in London in the 70s and now resides in the area. Well, I was born in Lewisham Hospital um, in 1970. I don't remember the day, so don't ask me what, what, what I was like. But yeah, um, I was born in Lewisham, brought up in Lewisham, went to school in Lewisham. Um, so really, uh, Lewisham was my world. I mean, we were not taught um, Yoruba. We were not encouraged to speak it. And um, we didn't really have uh, Nigerian speaking friends. So as far as we were concerned, Lewisham was the world. And everything was English. Everyone was English. Um, I didn't even know I was a different skin color. <laughs> but I don't think my parents realized that it was... Um, it would have such a, an effect on us not teaching us from a young age because I think the notion then was um, encourage your children to speak English so that they can blend in with the English um, um, culture. So there's a lot of confusion and I think that stemmed from the fact that I did not identify with being a Nigerian um, from a young age. Ayola is an 18 year old British born Nigerian. I wanted to find out about her upbringing and how she identifies herself. I would say I had a very typical Nigerian upbringing. Nigerian food, Nigerian tradition. We had to greet our elders, greet our parents the Nigerian way. When people ask me, am I British? I feel uncomfortable saying I am British because I am Nigerian. But then again, I don't see myself as Nigerian as a whole. Like when I went to Nigeria, my brother, they weren't calling me Nigerian. They were calling me British. And I did feel kind of uncomfortable because it made me feel as if like, I'm not accepted. Like, because I'm not brought up there, I'm not Nigerian. That's how it made me feel. But when I'm in Britain, they call me Black British. I feel like I'm, I, I don't even know what I am. I'm, I'm very confused. I was still confused up until I was 18. I didn't even, I still did not know that I was meant to be a culture until in my 20s when I started to, you know, um, hang around adults again and they would all speak Yoruba and I would try my best and it would come out like, you know, like uh, some sort of language from outer space. I actually want to learn how to speak my language. Like, I understand some phrases, I talk some phrases, there are some, like, l phrases that I know, like, Olodo and Ashawa and all this kind of stuff that, if I want to cuss somebody. But I want to learn how to speak it fluently, I want to be able to teach my children. If the parents have not instilled in that child the importance from a very young age, from the time they're born, how are you going to tell a child that's 18, oh, to start speaking it now? It's too late! Parents play the most important role in this issue, so I met up with the Oya Banjos, a Nigerian couple currently raising two young children. I think it has a lot to do with the upbringing they have over here, because um, just because somebody's born over here as opposed to being born in Nigeria doesn't mean they can't be in touch with their roots. A lot of the people who live in this community are Nigerians as well. So our children are exposed to Nigeria in Britain, if I can put it that way. What we're doing now to our children to make sure they don't forget where they come from is teaching them Yoruba language, um, making sure they put on um, um, uh, traditional clothes, like my son already, he loves um, Buba and Shokoto, the traditional, and the, the hat as well, Fila. Yeah, that's his favorite, <laughs> and he's got a couple of them. He knows the, uh, the name of the president, in, Jonathan. Jonathan, yeah, and in, yeah. So, you know, by telling him what goes on in Nigeria and by speaking the language to him, okay. yeah. Finally, I had a subscriber to meet Alex, the founder of Euroco, a company which offers an alternative way to learn about Nigerian culture. The aim was to use African theatre 
you know, incorporating storytelling, drama, music, dance, arts and craft as a vehicle to help enhance the education of uh, primarily young people. Sadly, uh, some of our community events, you'll find that the majority of people that will be there uh, are non-Africans. So we cut across a uh, different background because uh, the art form now becomes a way of getting people together, enabling more people from other nationalities to taste Africa. And whereas for the Africans, um, so for some of them, it becomes a, a journey of a discovery. In some cases, it's about people getting in touch again with their culture, especially for the younger ones. Um, why the young people are not interested in the culture. That is a very controversial issue because um, my point of view is always been that it is the job of the parents to encourage uh, the children and young people you know, to appreciate, love their culture and heritage because it's a common saying if you don't know where you are coming from, how do you know where you're going to? You know, I believe very strongly in that. That's my view. A child is a product of their parents or their environment. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, there is hope, but they're going to have to learn it the hard way. You see, they have to learn it hard. What we're trying to do here is to try and change the mindset of certain parents who neglect the African culture, who neglect the, um, the importance of the Nigerian culture, showing that to their kids. Um, parents have a responsibility. The, the, the responsibility lies mainly with the parents. It's a disgrace because I don't know how to speak my own language. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know as much as I, as I would like to know about my own country. So obviously maybe I need to research that a bit more because I do ask my parents sometimes, but I don't know, they don't really give me an answer or they don't really know. So uh, maybe I should do more research. Maybe I should have that maybe if I was interested enough, I should research about it more and get to know about it more. But I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I don't even know what I would identify myself as, and that's quite upsetting, to be honest. Mm -hmm.